so the, <laughs> that's, ac that's actually a funny story that I haven't told really. Um, yes. That <laughs> I still got the scholarship as long as I use it for music stuff and really Ooh, that's, that's what so allowed cool. me to do a lot of the things that pr uh, like propelled me to here. Thanks Yoko Ono. Like you kind of helped yeah. fund my career for a minute, you know? <laughs> Hi, this is Lauren Engel. Today I'm here with Savannah Conley. Hello. <laughs> so you were born like 20 minutes outside of Nashville? I was, yes. Were Kingston your, Springs. Yeah. Are your, were your parents born there as well, like Nashville? No, they're from Arkansas. Oh. Um, yeah, all Southern, but different kind of Southern, I guess. What did they move to Nashville for? Music. Both of my parents, my mom's background yeah. singer and my dad's guitar player. And uh, so my dad, they moved to Nashville because my dad got his first touring job um, when he was, I guess, 23. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they moved to Nashville, had me, and then we just sang. Mm -hmm. What was it like growing with such a, such a musical family? Like, did you feel like you had pressure to... I had zero pressure. Mm -hmm. um, if anything, you know... <laughs> They didn't try to keep me from it, but I know that like part of them definitely hoped that I wouldn't do oh, this. Really? Just just because it's such a hard road, mm. you know. It's so it, there's never an easy way to do it. There's never like a this is the rule book for how you succeed. And so they, you know, I'm sure part of them would have rather me have a more stable job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, they, I mean, they were. Yeah, I always say I had the option not to. And I had the option to mm -hmm. do it. So. You know, they were happy either way, but I know that now they're they're pretty they're happy with mm -hmm. what I chose. How do you, sure. yeah? How would you describe yourself back then, growing up? Ooh, <laughs> uh, growing up, how would I describe myself? Mm -hmm. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> I was a weird kid. Um, I mean, I'm still a weird kid, but I like I definitely, you know, I was very. I loved to read. I loved to you know be outside but I also loved you know to sit I was kind of like I wore dresses all the time but I was covered in mud so mm -hmm. I was like a tomboy yeah but I was you know also girly which is kind of how I am now oh my god that dog looks like my dog <laughs> <laughs> um but I yeah I mean I was a pretty weird kid I said weird stuff off the wall stuff I still do I guess mm -hmm. um but it's kind of it's quieter yeah. than I am now. I talk more. <laughs> but um, you're yeah. Up. yeah. Okay. Do you remember the first CD you bought? Bonnie Raitt. Oh. It was a cassette, um, <laughs> and it was the first cassette that I bought, like, or that I had my mom buy for me. And I was, mm -hmm. I guess, I was three. Um, yeah, it was her greatest hits, or. Yeah, it was their greatest hits cassette. Yeah. And uh, I would not allow them to, they had to buy a second one because we wore that one out. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And you started writing like so young, right, when you were six or seven. I did. I uh, wrote my first, I mean, you know, if you could call it writing your first song when you're seven, you know, about like puppies and stuff. But <laughs> um, I wrote my first song when I was seven. And my first like actual song that like you could call a song, mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't good or anything. But <laughs> when I was 11, so that was when I started writing. Mm -hmm. Did you like school growing up? I loved school. Yeah, I did. I was such a nerd. I still am, but I I really loved school. Loved the routine of it. I uh, I went to college for a couple years and then I quit. But there's definitely still a part of me that like wishes I was in school. Mm -hmm. Not really wishes I was in school, but like misses parts of being yeah. in school. What did you study? I was an English major. Oh. Yes. I uh, was an English major with an education minor. Um, so I was going to be an, Eng or, yeah, an English teacher. And uh, so then I quit and got a record deal about a year later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I guess it was the right decision. Did it ever occur to you to study music? In school? Yeah. Um, I minored in, I went to Belmont, um, a school, a music school in Nashville, and um, I minored in songwriting for a minute, but I just like, I did it just because I felt like that was what I was supposed to do, and really I just, you know, it's not really, it sounds kind of pretentious to say it, but it's really not something you can teach. Mm. It's not really a teachable thing. You can practice, like the practice was really good, 
but I wasn't really, you know, paying a lot of money to practice songwriting that I could do on my own. But really, my English major classes helped my writing more than any music stuff ever did. Um, just cause of the books we read, really, like, they were books I never would have read on my own. Mm. So college did offer, like, valuable things, but it just ended up not being the right thing to do to completion. Mm -hmm. How did you get into the music industry initially? Like, did your parents help you out, or did you find your own path? Uh, no, I, uh, well, I mean, my dad definitely, like, you know, he helped me in the beginning, and he still helps me now. Mm -hmm. Um, but as far as, like, people that helped spur it along, I met on my own. Um, I mean, obviously, my, I have my parents, like, mm -hmm. I owe everything to my parents, but I, like, as far as you know, connections, I made those on my mm -hmm. own. Did you, like, how did you get your name out there initially? Did you do a lot of performances or from online? Yeah, I played a lot around town. Really, it, it honestly did happen pretty organically. Um, there was really this, there was this one showcase that I did um, called Skyville in Nashville. And um, it was a live stream thing. And, um, that video, they videoed it all, and it was this really like well done video, and um, that was really the video that it got circled around in the industry. It got passed to A and R there, Steve Robertson, and then he passed it on to Dave Cobb, and uh, then now we're here. Oh, how many years ago was that? Uh, not even one. <laughs> wow, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that was uh, not even a year ago. Yeah, um, and that's how you were introduced to Dave Cobb. That's how I was introduced to Dave Cobb. Yeah. Yep, and. Uh, so then we, I went in, uh, played half a song for Dave, and uh, he like stopped me before I finished, and he was like, "That's enough." And I was like, Ugh, "What?" <laughs> and uh, he looked at my A and R guy and he said, uh, "Are you in?" Because I'm in. I was like, wow. "All right." And then we flew to New York the next week and been kind of going ever since. Mm -hmm. How did you meet your uh, original management or initial team? Yeah, through the same video. Um, yeah, it was actually, he, my manager was at the actual performance, um, of the video, like, in the room, and, uh, so I met him through that, and he's been with me ever since, he's amazing. Wow, so you were doing this all alongside when you were studying? Um, or? I think I quit at that point, I had just quit school at that point, so I was just working, I was waiting tables, Oh. but, um. Yeah, I was waitressing and nannying and doing all kinds yeah. of stuff. Um, Did he kind of just know things would work out? Uh, <laughs> no, but I, you know, it kind of got to the point in school where I was like turning down gigs to study. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know, if this is what I really want to do, I better do it now and not waste any more time. Um, so I, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't really, you never really know it's going to work out, even if you are fully successful. You never know if it's going to stick around, if you're going to, you know, it could all fall apart any day. So this mm -hmm. is a very, uh, it's not a set in stone career path. So you kind of just have to shoot blindly <laughs> all the time yeah. and kind of just try to have fun doing it because yeah. that's all you really can do. Mm -hmm. So I never really like thought for sure it would work out and I never really think for sure it'll work out now. I'm just kind of <laughs> doing it and hoping that it connects with somebody and hoping that, you know, it's something I can do for the rest of my life. I like this way of doing things. Oh, it's very cool. <laughs> it's way less awkward than like sitting down. Yeah. And, like, I like the walking and that you're in it too. Like it makes me feel like I'm like chatting. Yeah, it's I love cool. it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and in 2016, you were awarded the John Lennon. Like yeah. So that, <laughs> that's ac that's actually a funny story that I haven't told really. Um, yes. That <laughs> <laughs> original. I, uh, yeah, <laughs> I won that scholarship I had just gotten like totally broken up with I quit school I felt like my life was like falling apart and uh I got a, I kept getting a call from a New York number I kept denying it because I thought it was a telemarketer mm. and so finally I answered it and I was like hello and she was like hi this is so and so with BMI and you've won I was like what I've won what because I like, I applied for so many scholarships and so just like, 
I have no idea what I applied for and what I didn't. All music related? And, uh, some music related, some not music related, some like essay based, you know, whatever. But um, yeah, I had sent a ton of songs. And uh, so I, I was still in college, obviously, when I did that at that point, but I had just quit when I got that call mm -hmm. and like turned in my papers maybe two days prior. So she was like, the John Lennon scholarship. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and well, that's really cool, but I quit school. <laughs> and yeah. she was like, well, that's fine. You still get the money. I was like, what? Like as long as, Whoa. but it, it turns out like as soon as, or I mean like, I still got the scholarship as long as I use it for music stuff. And really oh, that's, that's what so allowed cool. me to do a lot of the things that uh, like propelled me to here. Mm -hmm. um, that scholarship allowed me monetarily to do a lot of things that I would not have been able to do. Oh wow. And uh, so really, it, re it did fund my college, just a different kind of college. Yeah. <laughs> different kind of school and education. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that was really, I really didn't know the scope or the scale of what that scholarship was until after I won it. And um, it was really cool to like, you know, experience that and to kind of say that like, like, thanks Yoko Ono. Like, you kind of helped yeah. fund my career for a minute, you know? <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but it was, yeah, I didn't really know much about it till after it happened, but um, yeah, it was, mm -hmm. wow. it was a cool thing. It was an, a great experience. Mm -hmm. How did you realize you were in the right stage of your career to sign a record deal? Mmm, my lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I didn't know. Um, I really, I'm so lucky to have, like, an incredible team of people around me, just like a great circle of trusted people. And uh, I mean, you know, I've thought I've been ready before and for a long time, just cause I'm so ready to get out there and do go, go, go. And, uh, but really it was my lawyer saying, this is the right deal. This is who you need to be with. Oh, you're already meeting with and, a lot uh, of people. Yeah, yeah, we have been meeting with labels for a while, and um, but this one, I mean, I was a huge fan of Dave's to begin with, and which, Dave, if you're listening, don't get a big head, um, <laughs> but no, <laughs> he knows that, he knows I'm a huge fan. Um, yeah, I was a huge fan of his, and then I, you know, the deal was great, the team is amazing at Atlantic and Electra and Low Country Sound, and um, so yeah, I mean, my, my lawyer, it's pretty hard to have your lawyer say, yes, like go for it. Mm -hmm. And so he did. And so I said, all right, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> How do you say your music has changed since the early songs you wrote? Oh boy. Uh, that's a tough one. I think probably I was writing, when I was young, I was writing about experiences that I'd either seen or heard about or dreamt of experiencing. Mm -hmm. experiencing. And I, you know, now, you know, I'm not old, but I'm older, and now I'm writing about things that I've actually done and that I've actually lived, and um, I guess it's it, not that the earlier stuff didn't come from a true place, but it came from a, a more a dreamy place. This comes from a, a gut place, you know, like a, mm -hmm. like a, you know, I experienced this and I want it to come across to other people that may have experienced the same thing mm -hmm. or something close. Yeah. How would you say you've grown as a person since you were younger? Oh, <laughs> oh I got tougher. <laughs> um, still not super tough, but definitely got tougher. Um, gotten more, you know, I don't want to say wary, but gotten less naive. Mm. Um, and, you know, less judgmental. The more people I meet, the more redeeming qualities I find in humans in general. And it was really easy for me growing up to write things off and to say, eh, eh, nope, nope, I want to be this kind of pe person, so I'm going to surround myself with these kinds of people. And now, I surround myself with just good people. It doesn't matter who you are, what you like, what you do, you know, as long as you're a good person. And that can entail a lot of things. So I think mm -hmm. my judgment, you know, is really, I, I, uh, I don't think I'm judgmental anymore. Maybe I am, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to judge myself. But um, yeah, that's, yeah, I think those are the main, mm -hmm. you know, 
What would you say have been your biggest challenges so far? Accepting who I am, probably, mm -hmm. and I think that's a big one for everybody. But, you know, I've always been a stickler about like things that I listen to and things that I watch. Like, I want it to be authentic. The people that I surround myself with, I want them to be authentic. And so I've always tried to, you know, maintain authenticity, but I like, <laughs> I realize that that's really hard to do when you don't like yourself or you don't, you know, you don't like, you haven't fully accepted who you are and you keep trying to make yourself this or make yourself that or you think you're not cool enough or you think you're not, you know, whatever. And it's been really hard for me to say, you know what, this is what, and I'm still working on it. I mean, I work on it every day, mm -hmm. but it's like, this is, it's hard to accept like, this is what I do. I'm not gonna, you know, change it to fit the, the, uh, whatever trend or what my best friend likes or what my boyfriend likes or what my mom thinks I should do or you know it's like this is what I want to do this is what I feel is right and so I'm gonna do it mm -hmm. that's been really hard but still working on it yeah what does love mean to you oh <laughs> man these are tough ones <laughs> oh man what does love mean to me it can mean it can mean so many things because there's there are so many different types of love like the love that I love my mom with is different mm. than the love that I love my sister with even yeah and then the love that I love my best friend with is the is different from the love mm. that I love whoever I'm you know in love with yeah Ooh, sorry <laughs> I love your hair Thank you. um but it's oh man I think Romantic love is hard. <laughs> it's really yeah. hard. Um, familial love is hard too, but in a different way. Um, I don't know. I think I still haven't experienced real romantic love. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been in love, but it wasn't the right kind of yeah. love. You know? Like, I think I, think I need the... It wasn't a healthy love. Yeah. I've been in love, but it wasn't healthy. I think mm -hmm. once I experience that, I'll know more of what love is. Yeah. But I don't really know that I know what love mm -hmm. is right now. And I know what love yeah. is for my family. What do I want to be remembered for? <laughs> oh, man, these are so hard. Uh, I don't know. Kindness. Yeah. Um, kindness, authenticity. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, I mean, you know, to get to the like, look at me part of it, I don't know, artistic prowess. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know if that's like a, a thing. I want to, yeah. I want to be known for being good at what I do. Yeah. Um, but as a human, probably kindness and authenticity yeah. and, you know, goodness, mm -hmm. acceptance. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I love that. This is awesome. Yeah. Thank you so <laughs> Thank much. Thank you. Yeah, this is great. Oh, sweet. Bye, guys.